Hi there, I'm continuing my analysis of my games from the Reykjavik Open 2022. And um, uh, we got to round five now. Uh, let me just change that one. That should be round five, certainly, not round, uh, round three. And um, I'm on three out of four after having a buy in the first round and one draw. Uh, and I have the black pieces, so we'll flip the board around as well. Uh, and I'm paired against um, a fantastic player from India, uh, Ranuk Sadwani. Um, now, Ranuk is the, one of the generation of young Indian prodigies, potentially world champion material. I mean, he's only about eight years old. No, I say eight. He's not eight. I, I don't know entirely how young he is, but let's say 14, 15. He's 26, 28. I think he holds the record in Puzzle Rush on chess.com. He's, he's an amazingly talented, brilliant Indian youngster. And he's probably going to be 2,700 at some point. So a great pairing, actually, because I love playing, uh, I love playing strong players. Uh, and I love playing potential world champions before, while, while they're still in their diapers, while they're still in their nappies, because, you know, beat them when they're young, because you won't get a chance when they're older. I mean, I managed to beat Magnus when he was young and, you know, just try to take down as many of these potential world champions as you can. So I was really looking forward to this game. Um, a lot of respect for my opponent, you know, and I just wanted to have a fun game. So let's have a look at this this pairing now. So I, I, I was really expecting the move e4 uh, more in my preparation so when he played d4 i, I was actually a little a, a little bit shocked at him and uh <laughs> which is probably not a good thing to be and um I, I thought for this tournament i would play a dutch my favorite opening but but with a little bit of a, a difference so i played e6 this is my normal move order to get into the dutch if they go e4, I, you have to be prepared for a French defence, but I had prepared that in the morning, so I was fine. I like the French. And this move order avoids a lot of the gambit uh, variations. So my opponent played c4, and now I get the Dutch f5. My opponent played g3, and he's playing very quickly here. Knight f6, bishop g2, and now I had quite a long think. My normal Dutch is... The classical with this kind of setup which i do believe which i do like playing but i have to admit for the Reykjavik open i hadn't really prepared at all uh, as you may aware my dad passed away very basically the day before come well the funeral was the day before coming i hadn't really done any prep my opening work was was uh, non-existent and i was just doing a bit of work in the morning and i i you know in these big tournaments you want to have like a couple of weeks preparation before going or you just want to update your openings so, you know, rather than trying to remember my theory here, which he'd be expecting, I wanted to also, it's nice to try slightly different things now and again. So I had decided I was going to play the Stonewall Dutch in this tournament. A couple of reasons. It's a very solid way to play. And my idea for this tournament was just to get into the middle game, even if I'm a little bit worse, but with a solid position so I can enjoy playing uh, some middle game positions and enjoy playing chess again. I love playing these longer time limits over the board. I wanted to enjoy it. The second option is the Stonewall. I think it's a very good underrated opening. You get a lot of space with the black pieces. It's the only opening against one d4 where you get more space than your opponent because of the pawn here. And the other option is my opponent's a tactical genius. So I don't want to allow him to attack me. And the Stonewall is a Stonewall formation. It's very hard to attack. So I, I didn't really know the theory of this, and you don't have to know that much in general with stone wall. You, you set up with your pawns all on light squares. You develop your bishop normally to d6. You castle, and then you decide what you're going to do with your queen side pieces. The bishop on c8 either comes around to h5 to try and escape, or it comes to b7 where you try to cut across the diagonal. And then you work out some some plans. <laughs> that's that's what I know. Uh, I know a bit more than that, but that's the general idea. You have to also understand what your opponent's trying to achieve. He's trying to get control of your weakened square. This is the problem with the stone wall. This square can't be controlled by a black pawn, so you have to be very careful about this square. So let's let's move on anyway. So okay, so I continue with c6 castles. I move my bishop here. B3. Now, I know Richard Report has experimented with some ideas of the knight coming in h4, h5, but I don't really believe those lines. 
with the move b3 my opponent is playing a positional plan that i was aware from from a, a match a rapid play game between gary kasparov with the white pieces and nigel short nigel short used to play the stone wall and i was aware that a very positionally desirable idea for white is to exchange dark square bishops why does white want to exchange these pieces to get more control of this weakened square he's getting rid of a defender of that square it is the basic answer he also wants to leave me in my bad pieces and this bishop is bad because my pawns are on light squares that's a light square bishop it's getting trapped by its own pawns so following that very old game i know queen e7 is the correct option because for the time being it stops this move and the second idea is that if white insists on playing this move he has to play a4 now his rook controls that square but a mistake that nigel did against gary kasparov here nigel castled in this position but in the notes to that game i remember this is going back for when i was like 12 years old so younger than my opponent i remember that this was a good solid option why because now yes black well sorry white is going to exchange bishops but black will always have control of b4 so i always have some chances and some hold on that area of the board through playing this a5 move so my opponent continues with this bishop a3 i took it figuring that it's worth putting my opponent's knight on the side of the board because i figured a, a normal idea that uh, white wants to do is get this knight somewhere to control this square so you've got to think how can the, his pieces his knights control this square well if he get his knights to d3 that would be great but the knight can't really get to d3 uh, but it can go to here and then after knight here go here so i figured by putting his knight over here it's on a longer route to the most important positional square which is here because he has to now go c2 e1 here and here but that, that takes quite a long time. Okay, so I simply castled. My opponent went for this plan, knight c2. I now developed my knight, just controlling that square for now, very solid position. My opponent continued with his good positional plan coming in. And now clearly, this is the only piece I haven't got developed. And clearly in this structure, I'm not really bringing it around this way. I did think about that for a little bit before, but b6 and bishop b7, look like a very natural way to play the knight came into d3 we're just developing my bishop comes here and the point eventually will be to play c5 and open it up so rook c1 i did indeed play c5 and i was actually very happy the way the opening had gone here i figured this was roughly even um let's see what stockfish thinks i mean why should i be worse in this position the computer actually thinks I'm quite a little bit worse, quite a lot worse here, but I, I disagree here. Uh, there's no reason I should be worse. There's only this square, but I'm very, very solid, and it's very hard for my opponent to come up with a good plan. I'm happy the way the opening's gone. Uh, and this is, you know, my pieces are all developed, my rooks are connected, it's fine. Now my opponent played e3, just controlling the center, and now I just started to move my rooks to better squares into the middle, controlling here. My opponent played rook e1, and this, this was indicated to me that he's also playing a slow manoeuvring game, and maybe he's waiting for me to make a mistake, which I thought maybe it was a very mature approach from a young player, because the rook here doesn't do a great deal. It does improve his position. For example, if any exchanges are made, the rook is well placed, but it's a mature approach. I think a lot of you know players around his age who are more uh, you know untalented would start trying to do something like moving a knight into e5 but with something like knight e5 i'm actually very happy you can see the evaluation changes because i can get rid of one pair of knights this is this is very nice and i can either put another rook in the middle or i can just keep trying to exchange all the knights off which must be getting to complete equality i'd probably move the rook in the middle first as this is a slight bad move order but it means more exchanges very more like very likely to get to an easy draw so my opponent played rook e1, and now I thought, okay, well, I, you know, I, I, I don't, I do, I don't really just want to wait for him, and I, I know that he wants me to do something, but I need to think of a plan here, and I'm thinking, okay, well, I have to be quite careful, because if I ever try to maneuver this knight away, I do give up this square, but I'm also thinking, look, I, I want to try win this game. I know I'm playing a stronger play, but you know, I, I, I always play for a win. 
and I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to try and generate something on the king's side. So I am going to try to put my knight here, try to bring my other knight around, and then maybe push a g5 at the right moment. Very risky, but let's go for it. So I put my knight into the middle. Very surprised by my opponent's next move. A again, I don't know what a computer thinks of this next move, but I, f I feel it could be a mistake. Uh, I feel you, you shouldn't play on the, you shouldn't make pawn moves on the area of the board where, and I could be wrong here, by the way, of course I could be wrong. I'm, you know, it's just my personal opinion. You, 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 you know, he's weaker on the king side because I already have one pawn advance there. My rook has some potential. My knight has potential. I might be going g5 here, but I think he should let me play it. And, and his move h4, I don't know if the computer, well, the computer sort of, let's have a look probably doesn't mind it okay it does mind it a bit uh h4 i haven't checked this game with a computer and this is stockfish 11 this move just to me seems wrong and i was very happy to see it for a couple of reasons number one if i do play g5 his king defense is going to be it's going to be less defended because he's moved a pawn there so g3 and f2 just seem a little bit weaker number two the g4 square is now much more attractive for a knight to come in. Again, I, you know, I, I, I don't think it's a terrible move, but I think it's just a slight error. So first of all, I move my rook away from the f file, which I wasn't really happy to do, but lining up against the queen makes a lot of sense. And I also still wanted to avoid moving this knight for as long as possible, because I saw if he comes in, the trader knights probably helps me. So he now goes queen e2, moving off the diagonal, and of course now I come round with ideas of coming to this square he moves into e5 of one of his knights and now patience is needed here and rook c7 seem to improve my position because it defends my bishop and in some cases i can double up behind these pawns any you have to be very careful about exchanging pawns in these positions you only exchange pawns if it helps you but let's have a look if i exchange here does this help me no because i've opened up his queen and rook that can only help him if I exchange here, does that help me? And my figuring was no, because I've opened up the B file towards a very weak pawn. That can only help him. But then, of course, you've got to think, what about if he exchanges? Well, if he exchanges here, this only helps me. Because let's say I take with a pawn. Now I have the B file later on. I have a, a, a pawn in the middle I can use. So I, I want him to exchange there. If he exchanges here, well, again, if I just take with a pawn... This seems to help me because I've got ideas at some point of getting a pass pawn. So you've got to constantly work these things out. And you've got to constantly sort of hope your opponent cracks first in these very tight positions where there's a lot of tension. Now my opponent played queen b2 and this seemed like a good idea. His queen is getting more control here, maybe coming out to a3. And this is where I had a long think and I thought, okay, I, can't, I, I could just wait here and see, and, and see if he can make any progress. But... Come on, let's have some fun. And my eyes are starting to get drawn to the king side. Mainly because, you know, his h4 move. And my knight is good. And I thought, okay, I want to play g5. But I can't replay it now. How am I going to... I want to play h6 and g5. And get force him to take like this. When my rook, another reason for me moving it to here. Might be able to come over to h7. And let's just attack him. But I also am thinking, well, if I go h6, I'm weakening g6. It's a very risky plan. So I, I came up with the idea now of going queen e8. If he does not do anything now, I'm going to move my queen nearer his king. I'm covering g6. And my general idea is h6, g5. If the pawns get exchanged, I'm going to move my rook to h7, my queen to the h file. And I'm going to have two pieces lined up. So it's a very interesting plan this i mean let's see i bet the computer doesn't suggest this at all oh, oh my god it did flicker there the computer just suggests waiting which i think is okay because i don't see how white improves we've talked about any exchanges here any exchanges kind of help uh probably the opposing player but i want to play proactively and this move struck me as a very interesting option at least and um the game now continues. My opponent plays rook c2, and I go for this risky plan, h6. Weakening my structure. The computer doesn't like it, but it's a very exciting idea. I'm going for the attack with g5. My opponent keeps moving his pieces to get ready. He has to now open things up. He's got his pieces to good squares to do it. 
I play g5. Now the downside of this, as we're gonna see, my king is very exposed. So he can also, if he ever gets around the back with a knight on e5, it's, you know, it's a really risky way to play, but uh, you know, that's the way I play chess. Now my opponent did take on d5, a good idea. He's got to open up the position, get to my king around the side. I took with my bishop because I want to keep my bishop in possible attacking formation. Uh, and now my opponent played knight c4. So he's already trying to target some of these weaknesses. I took on d4 because I realized this will force him to take with a pawn. And that moves another pawn away from his king and it blocks his queen away from my king. Now, uh, I just have to remind myself, why can't he take with the knight here? There was a reason he can't take with the knight. Oh, because I simply just open his king up and he's got to have the option of these positions of going knight takes h4. Look how my rook is very well placed to swing over as well. So he has to take with a pawn. And now, well, this was, this was a, a critical moment. And I played a move that defended this pawn because I, I had to think here. But my first thought, and maybe the right thought, is just to continue coming at him and play f4. Really trying to just do everything over there. I realized he could take this pawn, but I think this may well have been the right way to play. And you can see the computer gives white is slightly better, but it's a complete mess of a position here. Okay, well I play rook, C, rook b7 and I'm, my, I'm, I'm just trying to defend and attack at the same time. Defend over there, attack over there. This position gets fascinating now. Again, I, I, I'm sort of using the computer on and off here. The computer really likes um, white's position, but, well not really, but it's so complex here. He plays his knight into this square. And here, well, now I play f4. I'm, I, you know, I'm not backing down now, but he has got this open c file. This is just crazy. We'll put the computer on a bit later on. Let's just show you the action. The, the point is, if he takes on f4, well, the simplest option here is to take this way and then try to somehow get over with my pieces, continue the attack. But I do have other options here, and one of those options is something like g4, forcing that away and then coming in with my queen this way. Really tense stuff because he's gonna to try to get around the back of my position. He plays g4 and I think this is a clever idea because he's really thinking how can I keep the position closed. Um, this is move 27 because it's been such a complex game. We're both down to not much time on the clock. I'm gonna show you how the game went without the computer first and then we'll put it on the computer. My figuring was if I don't open up the king side now He's going to have the advantage because of his knight there and because of his rook coming in. So I played the rather surprising h5. I'm sacrificing material, but I'm getting his king as open as I can. Now he came in with the knight. Knight takes g5. And my idea is pawn takes g4. I'm just continuing with ideas of f3 now, trying to smother his bishop with the idea of my queen coming in this way. It's a real race situation, but look at his knights. His knights are very well placed. He plays obviously the best move. His rook now comes in, combining with his knights in the position. And I've got to only continue here. I play the move f3. There's no backing down now. It's a race towards his king. He's racing towards mine. This is the kind of chess we like, isn't it? He, If he, def if he moves his bishop... Well, it gives me time to bring my queen in, which looks very scary for him. So he plays knight on g to e7. There's tactics now everywhere. And here I saw quite an amazing idea, but I wasn't sure it was working. He's attacking my rook. I just continue with pawn takes g2, giving up my rook. And now I was very worried about a move which my opponent didn't play. We're both short of time. He now took on d8 which was actually not a good move. I was much more scared here of some idea with his knight coming to this square with check. It just seemed to me that the combination of these pieces, and I wasn't even that confident here. My, my thought process was, this guy is so good at tactics. It just looks like there's something scary here for me. And the idea here, I was gonna probably go to this square. And if he came in with a check here, I was gonna try and come here. But this looks, ridiculous now because the knight d6 check 
and who knows what's happening I have three I mean let's just show this line this is one line I was trying to work out drawing the course of the game where I have three pieces for his queen I don't know what's going on here I can dream of going in with my knight like this but pff, I just don't know what's happening we'll put the computer on afterwards my opponent also confused these are the kind of positions I used to thrive in complete chaos on the board my opponent instead took my rook but I had calculated this was actually a losing idea you can now take a bit of time and uh, try to see if you can find my winning plan here this looks like it should be winning for him because the point is if I take the knight rook c8 he wins my queen um, I guess I have to take his rook first which I did and again can you see the winning idea here the point being if I take his knight again well I think he just goes queen somewhere let's say queen here keeping this option open and I can't stop rook c8 winning my queen so it looks like he's winning but I have quite an amazing resource that I had found here that turns the tables on my young opponent's head and the move that I now played was well I think it's a very nice move knight g5 and I'd seen this well in advance and the point of this move is well it's quite phenomenal position pieces everywhere but I'm threatening knight h3 and pawn equals queen checkmate so if he tries I don't know like uh, anything this knight h3 and queening my pawn is simply winning if he takes my knight what is my idea well now the h file is open so I was going to come in with my queen and the thing that is very works in my favor is that he has no checks here this knight blocks his rook his knights can't move with a check and there's no good way for him to now stop my queen coming in to the h1 square with checkmate so unbelievably if we go back to this position you can see that stockfish finds the move knight g5 only around now with a completely winning game he tries f3 but i just i mean i was very nervous i mean this is the most nervous i've been forever i mean uh, you know as you get older i think you get more nervous and one thing i sort of realized is that you know i haven't played much chess so those nerves i was so nervous and here i was even don't mess it up i think i'm winning but don't think those thoughts just play the best moves well i just took with a pawn because i keep the threat here of taking there and the point is I can't go check now because he goes king takes pawn so I have to defend my pawn on g2 renewing the threat and after pawn takes here well I continue with my idea and even here move 34 where we're both down to our last seconds I was like what's his idea he must have a brilliant idea here that I've I've missed and then he resigns <laughs> and I'm like and I'm like okay and I'm trying to keep my call cool when I shake his hand you know I shake his hand and I'm like oh my god and I, I, I you know I, I had to get out the tournament hall and just and just like shake a little bit outside um it's quite funny actually I've had this before when I when, when I won a game and uh, um people thought I was quite rude actually because I was playing I was playing games actually in Reykjavik about eight years ago and I basically had I was, there was a big crowd around the game like 20 30 people you know, I get a bit of anxiety at times, and uh, I I had seen that I had a force mate sequence that was about eight moves long, and I played the first move of it, which was quite a shocking move, and I was so nervous that I had to get up and walk away because the crowd was a bit too much, a bit too close. So I had to when I played the move, I just had to get away from the board. So I I, I got away from the board, um, with a force checkmate on the board and a lot of people actually thought that I was being rude here because it's like oh yeah I'm showing off I'm checkmating I go for a walk but in actual fact it was I was so nervous you know I couldn't sit at the board <laughs> I just had to go and get some have a break so it's like you know but anyway obviously that was a lovely feeling um this idea of bringing the queen in is unstoppable now combined with the two pawns with very interesting uh win in the dutch crazy crazy stuff going on there uh, again if we put it on the computer around this stage you know the computer does feel my opponent can defend and does feel he played quite well after g4 I didn't play the top uh, suggestion here in actual fact I can play slower with b5 with time pressure this seemed a way to bring on the maximum chaos but the one move my opponent missed if we keep going forwards well rook c7 was good f3 was playable and now 
the idea that my opponent can simply play. Well, actually, I think knight g7 was also all right, this move. Um, I played pawn takes g2. And remember, this is just, you know, this is humans playing, not computers. Even my opponent, you know, a star on solving chess problems couldn't solve this. But my instinct was right that after knight d5, he's actually losing. And he could have won with this line we mentioned, knight h6 check. I have to go king h8. And now the winning move is actually what we, well, if he comes this way with the knight, I have to come back. And I did actually see that, you know, this might have to be a draw. And now he goes rook takes b7. I know he comes back. I mean, what's he doing? Okay, so the computer is a bit slow here, isn't it, actually? So the, even the computer's not finding it. Let's let it run a little bit here. That's how confusing it is. It's given this line. Okay, let's try that again. So knight hf7, king g8, and where is the win? I'm, I'm letting the computer show me the win, but it's misbehaving. Rook takes b7. I have to go bishop takes b7, I guess. Yeah, bishop takes b7. The rook comes in here, okay. And now it wants me to give up peace. So Because if I go here, he's now going knight h6 check king here and rook f7 oh that's beautiful with the idea of knight g6 this is the key, this is the key move rook f7 what a beautiful idea because he wants to go knight g6 but my queen is defending it so if he goes rook f7 i don't have any way to stop a beautiful checkmate from my opponent so he missed this one chance uh in in a very exciting finish um but he's gonna obviously be a champion in the future a uh, very talented player, and it's just nice to uh, get a win against someone like that while while they're still young. So um, remember, please do like this video and subscribe to my channel. Let's have a look at the results after that round, so we can go and have a look. So uh, I know it's a little bit small. Apologise for that. Let's see if we can make it a little bit bigger because things are going pretty well at, at, at this stage. So um, these are the pairings results of the top. Let's just take that bit there. We can make them bigger as we can. So that was a very good win on board six of me with the black pieces. There was a lot of draws. So that actually now put me just half a point behind the lead with hopefully the white pieces in the next round. And I'm very confident the white pieces have beaten anyone in the world on my day. So I was like, right, you know, we're halfway through the tournament. If I can win in round six of white, I'll be leading this tournament. Maybe I can win this incredibly strong tournament um with with that good win uh, with the black pieces there so um so i was feeling good uh, feeling pretty confident and uh just very nice to 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 get a win in like that with the dutch even if it's a stonewall dutch instead of damn dutch thanks cheers until next video